teams in the Premier League for the first year, it's often difficult. From a personal point of view, you seem to be flying. The team were doing really well. How, how do you sort of put into words the the story of that season from a Reading, Reading fan's point of view? I think um, well, it's, it's the highest finish in the top flight ever, I think, still. So it was great for the fans. And for us, it was just like um, everyone was living their dream, you know, playing in the Premier League, playing at big stadiums. And, you know, we weren't scared of no one, you know. We had uh, our tactics and stuff against certain players we had to try and stop against, you know, your Man United, your Arsenals and things like that. But we just stuck to, we stuck together and we had a good team spirit and, you know, we, we, we spent a lot of time, we did a lot of things together as a team and stuff like that. So we just went for it. We know, you know, we're here. So just, you know, nothing to be scared of, no fear. Just go there and just show what you can do and try and get, win as many games as you can, as possible, you know, and we did that. As well as the Chelsea game, there were some other big moments. What big scalps stand out for you that season? I can't, I can't remember all the games. I remember beating Liverpool. I remember drawing at home to Man United. I think the first time they met in the league, maybe. <laughs> um, Let's just, just focus on that Man United yeah, game. Yeah. That must have been massive. To come against them players at the time, the yeah. squad, the likes of the Skulls, yeah, Beckham. Like, King yeah, gigs. So three years ago I was watching you on match of the day. Um now I'm on a pitch with you against you. So I was, yeah, it was amazing, you know, you see your your team line up and go and shake everyone's hand, you see Rio Ferdinand, Paul Scholes, Ryan Giggs, Gary Nevels, uh, all these guys, uh, Van der Sar. <laughs> so yeah, it was it was crazy, but you know, you had a job to do, so we were just like boom, let's see what we can do. Well, you'd have been playing against Rio Ferdinand. Yeah, yeah, plenty yeah. of times, yeah. Yeah. And maybe was it Vidic at that time? Vidic as well. Yeah. Vidic, yeah. Vidic is him or, Vidic is probably the toughest defender I played against. Really? Yeah, he's just yeah, he was he didn't give you anything. He's just a solid defender, just he didn't care about playing out the back. He made sure he's stopping people scoring, you know what I mean? But yeah, he, he's top top defender. Do you think him and Rio complimented each other yeah, so well because Rio was so composed, so good on the ball, so good at bringing the ball out, mm. so good at reading the game. And he's got Vidic, just merciless, ruthless. Yeah, ruthless next just, to him. You can do that all you want, Rio. He's just going to defend. So, <laughs> yeah. And he's marking me, so it weren't nice. Um, yeah. They're top players, um, but as I said, that's the whole point of working hard all them years as a kid and as a young teenager yeah. to play up, be up against people like that, see, see how far you can go. Got the draw that day, as you mentioned. Steve Koppel again, spot on with his tactics. The way he set you up as well, like you mentioned, very brave playing two. No, we played our game. We played two up. Yeah, front. we played our uh, game. He, we did it. To win we games. didn't do none of that. Well, I've been at clubs where you play Man United. They're like, right, sit back, drop it in, blah blah. Make sure. Oh God, it's like just go for it, man. That's what Steve Koppel was just go and play your game and see what we can do. And you know, we always got results. Talk to me about some of the team bonding sessions that happened at Reading, some of the stuff that Steve Koppel would arrange to keep keep things ticking over, keep people buzzing, keep everyone sort of chomping at the bit, if you like. The, the main thing he did, the best thing he did is not change the team if you win. That's 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 he didn't have to do anything Sounds else. Sounds simple, but he, he's kind of genius. He, he didn't he didn't even need to do anything else. He didn't need to tell us where to go or anything like that. That's all he did, and that kept everybody happy because you knew as soon as if you're on the team and you're winning, you do what. And unless there's injuries, like I told you, you stay in, and that's all he did. And Wally and um, Kevin Dillon took most of the sessions, and Steve Copper will oversaw everything and spoke to you, you know, give you a bit of advice and coaching and stuff like that. So that's all it is. That's sim that simple. I swear down. What was the vibe like for the nightlife for the, the Reading players at the time go, within the squad? I used to go out with Sonko a lot. Um, I didn't really, I spent a couple of times I went out with a few of the other lads and that, but if it was a group thing and we end, I always end up with my mates doing my own thing. So, well, yeah, but I spent a lot of time with Sonko if we had a night out and that. So. What were your highlights personally that season? First season in the Premier League, what what do you feel sticks out for you as a, as a professional player? Um, maybe scoring scoring at um, Stamford Bridge, then Old Trafford, the next one, scoring at Anfield that year as well. Score Anfield that yeah, year as well. Yeah, yeah. So wow, 
I was in, didn't score at Emirates. That's the only one I missed out. And so, out of the top four at the time. Some record. Yeah, it's all right. It's Some all right. record. Massive finish for Reading. Highest Premier finish League. Premier League finish that the teams ever had. Massive. Yeah. Must have been the city. Must have been buzzing at that, that point in time. Yeah, it was a good place. A good place to be. To be fair, um, um, the fans. You know, I'd, when you go Reading, everyone's talking about the uh, results and how the team's doing. Um, the fans love it. They loved it. They loved it. So I'm always happy for them and happy to be there. That season. England Under-21 Championships, the Europeans. Massive names in that team. Massive to be included in that squad. Mm. Can you talk to me about that, being called into that setup? Well, towards the end of the season, we played Man City away. And um, Stuart Pearce was manager of Man, Man City. And I scored two. We won 2-0. After the game, we, we was meeting up with the England Under-21 squad the next day. I was doing my interview, I just finished, and he walked past me and went, see you tomorrow. <laughs> But he was, he's like a bit angry right now. But when we got into... That's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. We, when we got into the hotel with the squad in Derby, he's like, you're right, mate. Yeah, cheers for that yesterday. Probably got me the sack or just a bit of banter. And uh, Stuart Pearce was Probably like... Got me yeah, yeah. Stuart Pearce, we were around the dinner just having a bit of banter. See him and the... Um, I can't remember. Steve... Steve Wig, Wig, Wig his assistant. So, um, yeah, just had a bit of banter about that and then just got on with it. He seems like a great guy, Stuart Pearce. Yeah. Obviously, we, we know him from his, his stuff, obviously, with football in England and obviously the passions and the highlights of his career. Yeah. What, what's he like as a fella? Like? You know what? It's for, I'm going to say he surprised me because I was thinking there's going to be some madman. Like, his name was Psycho, isn't it? So his nickname was Psycho. I was thinking, but he's so calm and like well-spoken, gives you confidence. He's like total opposite to... All I can remember is when I'm like, I'm playing for Stuart Pearce now. All I can remember is scoring that penalty. I was going mad as well with him in front of the TV. That passion he showed. I was like, then I, f I thought I was going to see the same person. But as you as you know, as you you know learn over the years, people are not always on a pitch. You're totally different to what you're off it. And he was like so calm. And you know what? I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it, um, playing for him and being at the 21s with him. There was a real buzz about that squad as well. Can you talk to me about who else was in the team? Yeah, there was some. It was a good squad. I think that that squad, we should have won that tournament. But with that squad, come near on close. I think they got to the semi-final. We, we lost on penalties, I know, but we should have made it more comfortable than that. Um, in the game against Holland, we was one 0 down to the last minute. And they equalised in the ninety something, and so it had to go to extra time and then penalties. Um, yeah, we had the likes of. I think I'll keep. We had Joe Hart was not even number one then. It was Scott Carson was our number one keeper. Um, Leighton Baines, who's at the back? Anton again. Anil Hall, Cahill in the squad. Cahill wasn't even in the team at the time. That's how I mean. That so people Newhall like that would have been keeping him out. He's keeping City, out. Yeah. And um, Tace, Stephen Taylor was keeping him out. So we had some good, player good players at the time. Right back, Justin Hoyt, Liam Rossini, and them players. James Milner, Wayne Routledge, Ashley Young, Kim Richardson, Nigel Rio, Rio Coca, Mark Noble, uh, Tom Huddleston. It's, it's nuts. That's a team. Yeah, yeah. So we had some proper. Who was up front? We had me, Nugent, Vaughan, Derbyshire. I'm not sure. I think I'm not, there might be one other. I can't remember the full squad. So yeah, but we had a good, that squad there should have won that tournament easily. But we let ourselves down in the semis. What do you think the reason for, for like you say, for the not delivering on penalties? It seems to be a curse with England in penalty shootouts in particular. What, was you guys aware of that before the penalties? No, yeah. Well, we know we practiced. To be fair, from. From when we met up way before the tournament in the build-up games and everything like that, um, we was practicing them all the time. So we even had a friendly where the last friendly where we won five one, I think, but we done penalties anyway at the end in front of a crowd because Stuart Pearce wanted to get a feeling. But I don't think you can, um, you, you can't like, it's not something you can practice. You know what I mean? You can't like, replicate it at all. Because it's that moment of pressure and at the time, what's that cost? And you know what I mean? It's, it's not something you can repeat at any stage. What did Stuart Pearce say to the team, bearing in mind his history with England and penalties, 
what was his initial reaction to the defeat? No, I think um, in the change room, he just said, like, it's, just, it's luck of the draw, isn't it? So <laughs> how it goes, the penalties, you know what I mean? So and Stuart, um, Steve McLaren came in and shook all the boys' hand as well and um, said, well done, great tournament and that. But we was all disappointed, obviously, because we know that squad should have won that tournament, but we didn't. How would you describe Stuart Pearce's coaching? How would you describe his man management? Bearing man management, mind, I thought it was good. Bearing in mind the quality of Personally, players. for me, personally, when he when he spoke to me, everything was clear. I'm going to play. You know, your number one choice. But then it got to the tournament and I, and I wasn't in, in the starting lineup for the first game. <laughs> Do you think he's Typical. trying to get a reaction? Yeah, yeah, he did get a reaction as well because I came on, missed the penalty, we drew 0-0 to Czechoslovakia. So he did, that, that, that's fucked me up then for the rest of the tournament. But now, you know, it stuck to his word and put me in the next day, next you hit, game. You hit form after that. Yeah, yeah, it's kept me in the, in the team next game. So he knows I was, you know, I was up for it and I had a good season and I was really in, in a good place and I needed to Talk be to playing. Me. Talk to me about the next game. Yeah, we played Italy. Missed some chances early on. Um, so I missed some <laughs> chances I should have buried. But, you know, stuck to, stuck in there and eventually put one away and we were 2-0 up at half-time. Or, yeah, 2-0 up at half-time. Ended up drawing the two, game 2-2 two -two against Italy. It was, in that, it, it was in that Italy team. Anyone that stands out? Flazzini. Chiellini. He's captain of Italy now, isn't he? Yeah. Um, Cellini. Cellini, Cellini. Sorry. And um, it was a, a couple of midfielders uh, who, who went to Liverpool. They got bought by Liverpool and all that. I can't remember all the names. And uh, yeah, it was a, they were a good team, to be fair. And, but we should have beat them. How would you describe your time with, with England at the 21s? Yeah, I loved it. I loved it. Every it's just, it's just um, a buzz, like putting on that shirt. We even got to play play at Wembley Wembley before that tournament. The first game at Wembley was us against Italy, where we drew three three, and you know that was when I look back now, that was absolutely, I loved it. I loved being away with England because you're with different lads, or you're not with, got a couple of mates of different teams, and then you know get to see them and catch up and yeah. Well, you're all the same age group as well. It, it's well, different yeah, from a normal team. Yeah, well, there's, there's a few, a lot of young. I think Walcott was in the squad a couple of times. I think he's. A, few years younger than us and there's a few of them but mainly yeah all like Cameron Jerome is younger than me as well but he's one of my best pals and still to this day and um great player like, Cameron Jerome yeah I love him he does it he's you know handful and he's just and he, you know got, gets his goals as well good player and good guy you mentioned Walcott he came in the squad uh he's I think 18 or something like that we've okay. done a finishing session I always remember this he had a, someone pinged the ball to him. He had a bad touch, yeah, but he just went, Wheel! <laughs> his pace just got him there. And it got him so, it got him there so quick, he even had time to dink it over the keeper. I was like, yeah, all right, that's different levels of pace that, mate. <laughs> yeah, he's done well and he's had a great career. He's a top lad as well, nice lad. After that summer, you returned back to Reading for the team's second season in the Premier League. Mm -hmm. Talk to me, pick me up from that moment. Everybody wanted to leave. <laughs> really? When we all got back that preseason, everyone was linked. So this this club, that club, I was linked with so many. I had so many bids turned down by the club. Um, Can you remember any of the teams that would have come in for you? I think Villa, Sunderland, um, Bolton. Um, they, they didn't tell me everything because they knew I would lose <laughs> lose my head a bit, and I told them I want to leave. So and all the, some of the players, a lot of the players, wanted to leave and move on and go and test themselves, but. The club was like, no, we got to keep you all together. But I think that's the worst thing they did because a lot players of players didn't want, to, didn't want to be there. You, yeah, didn't want, to, didn't want to be there. And it showed. We ended up getting relegated. <laughs> it must have been disappointing from a personal point of view how far you'd taken and been with on the club's journey to then seeing the club, yeah. being a part of the club suffering relegation. Yeah, we had, but person for I'll talk for myself. I, I had ambition to go playing. Champions League playing, playing, you know, things like that. I want to take another level, to take it to the next step where I don't know for your villas for now, do well for them, then get another, you know, things like that. That's what that's how I wanted to do it because Villa's a big club, you know what I mean? And I, I would love to play for them and I would love to be given that opportunity. But, you know, it's football, you don't always get what you want. With the benefit of hindsight, do you think you, you made the wrong decision not, not leaving when? 
not leave. I didn't have a choice. That summer. I didn't have a choice. Really? I asked to leave. Um, they said no, you're not leaving. You, I think. Um, I think I, did. I even had. A, they even had a year option to add on to my contract, and that that got activated as well. So, I wasn't going anywhere, mate. Talk to me about the club suffering relegation. No doubt, a lot of the well-paid stars or the senior players at this point would have been exiting the club. Maybe a mass hiatus. Um, I didn't go. I, I I didn't go. I think there's only a few players went. Not Sid well went maybe uh, he might went, he went after the second se- the first season on didn't he did he stay for the second I don't think he was there he went after the first season so I think we lost City in the first, after the first season and then not many others moved on uh, it was literally the same team then then um, Shory when we got relegated Shory and them like them players all left but I was still there back to life in the championship. You've said you've had aspirations to be playing at the top level. You've mm. had that taste of, of the three Lions and the yeah, England yeah. and the setup. How, how did you motivate yourself personally to to want to kick on at We're that still, point? Still young, when we, when we got really good, what was I, 20, 22? So I had plenty of time to go again. So we just had to refocus and get things going again. Did you? Was there a notable difference? Did you notice the difference in quality and class when you dropped from the Premier League into what would be a much more physical league in the Championship? Well, I've already had experience in the Championship, so I knew what it was about. Um, it's the toughest league out of all of them. don't care what anyone says, Championship. In terms of trying to get out of it? No, just like um, the game, all the games are different. Premier League, you get time. So it's what you do with the board. Though, and the championship's like, poof, just so fast. And then, you know, every game's different. And you, you think... You know, you're playing bottom of the league and you just, it's probably be the hardest league game of the season, stuff like that. So, yeah, I, I didn't, the standard didn't drop. It's just, um, it's all, all about refocusing and trying to, before we get promoted again, and if, but we know how hard it is for teams that go down, especially a team breaking up. It's not going to, it's going to take time. Um, but we, I think we got to the playoffs, lost against Burnley in the semi-final and, players moved on after that <laughs> coming into that fourth season things must have been a little bit strained I'm guessing with with Steve Koppel and the yeah. situation regarding yourself wanting to, to leave the club and not being allowed to leave the club yeah I were, you, were I were, the starting team for the start of that fourth season yeah it was at the beginning and but I wanted to leave that I wanted to leave I wanted to leave the year before but they said no um so I was in and out and then eventually the manager started leaving me out of the squad completely because I was not a happy buddy well, around the around the camp. So I, I said, went in there and said, can I go on loan? He said, yeah. And then, and then Norwich came in and I just went on loan. Weird for a, a club in the championship to sort of loan out one of their top strikers to another club in the championship. Yeah. That strikes I, I, me as quite strange. Well... I said to him, I want to play football. I don't want to sit around on a bench or not in the squad, whatever, like that. So, and Norwich was was on the table and I said, like, hey, no problem, let me go down and let me play some football, man. He scored seven goals in 16 games. Do you reckon mm. at that point, Steve Cobb was thinking, well, we could have probably done with some of them goals? Mm, they were doing all right. So, he wasn't really, probably, I don't know, it's, you have to ask him that, mate. Um, I wasn't even thinking about them. I was just enjoying playing down there because Norwich is a great club, mate. I had a great time down there. Love fan, fans love me. I love the fans there. Enjoy playing there. You settled straight away? Yeah, played every week. It was brilliant. I loved it. So it was a great club. Do you think at that time where you'd been at, at Reading for so long that you needed mentally that move? You needed I needed that, it the year before. City. Yeah, yeah. I needed it the year before. Yeah. I tried to. I told them that. You know what I mean? Especially when you get the clubs that were, that were coming in for you I was excited about. And didn't happen. They wouldn't let it happen. So, am I right in thinking that Reading called you back towards the the back end of the season that year? So you, my loan you, finished. Right. Came back, and the manager says I'm going to be involved in this. Came back, played the first game against Watford. Came on for about 20 minutes and scored. Fans all happy, and I'm happy. And then. Still couldn't get in the side. The manager wouldn't change it for a bit, and I was, I was, you know, I was, I just came out of playing every single minute of every game, which I was enjoying down there. To back to Reading, coming off the bench, thinking, oh, I'm gonna get back in, but the team was doing well. So and 
Steve Couples rules. They never change the team, which is great. So at this point, Middlesbrough coming coming for you. T side. Hmm. Big club, big history. They've had some big players over the years that yeah. have, have represented the club. Yeah, well, my contract had finished at Reading and um uh, I was still in talks with Reading to sign a new one when Brendan Rogers came up took it took over. When Brendan when I left when my contract was finished, this Steve Couple left. And they appointed Brendan Rogers, and uh, he was on the phone to me, and I met up with him to talk about coming back. And uh, then I was like, <sighs> I, he couldn't sell it to me because I just spent four years there. And I didn't really enjoy being around that place, you know what I mean? I did, some of the people upstairs, and I didn't get on with, and you know, they were telling me how to live my life and how to where to be and where not to be and where to go and where not to go. And I was like, nah, let me move on and go to a different, fresh environment. Oh, you and Sonko having too many nights nah, out. It wasn't even, no, it wasn't even too many nights out. It's where I go. That pissed me off a lot. It's like, I was like, I'm not you. So I don't go to them places. And um, you can do that. That's not my thing. So they were saying you can't go around town or certain venues the, or what, the, what the, the director of football called, pulled me and my, my agent for a meeting. I was, I was thinking I was getting a new contract. It was about where I go. What kind of shit is that, man? Come on, man. Ain't time for that. And, um, yeah. So, when um, my contract was done at Reading, I um, had the opportunity to... I went up to Celtic. When I had a meet, meeting with Gordon Strachan up there, I had a look around there. With, I was going to sign there, but Gordon ended up leaving. So, I went to Middlesbrough. And signed for them when Gareth was trying to get me for a while, he said, Gareth Southgate. And um, ended up signing up there. What was Gareth Southgate like, your first impression of him as a manager? Oh, you could just tell you that you want, I got on with him. He's whilst, like open, he's honest, felt honest anyway. And I felt, you know, I felt comfortable up there. And I was like, yeah, let's just get the deal done and let's get things going. And we did. Side, how did you find it? Yeah, it was all right. It, was it took a while to settle in. Uh, you know, obviously, moving up there, I've never <laughs> lived up so far. There's very close to Scotland, and um, yeah, it was his house. Obviously, I had to move in the house and stuff like that again, get all of that sorted. Um, season started off okay, I was in and out a bit. There's a we had some good strikers up there and good players, and it's a big squad. and uh, we was like one of the favourites for promotion and but then only come November, October, wherever it was, um Scar Southgate got sacked and um we we was we was all in shock because we was in second in the league and um one point off top and they sacked the manager and we all loved him. We all got on with, well with him and we all loved playing for him. The whole squad it was all together we that squad we went out to he made us we all went out together places um, at dinner together. I had no one could leave the training ground without going upstairs, having lunch together with the boys and stuff like that. So yeah, it was he kept it kept a good group. Then we got sacked, but maybe that was other reasons. And then Gordon Strachan ended up coming down from Scotland. Then well, he already left, but he was free and he came down anyway. So I ended up playing for Gordon Strachan anyway. It's interesting, Gareth Southgate now where he is. Obviously, to get sacked second in the league at Middlesbrough, it must have been. Some non non footballing. Yeah, we know that. that we, was, don't, we don't know what was. That. Don't know what's going on there. Some non disclosed stuff. Yeah, plenty of that happened. So it wasn't about the football because we was doing well, and if we'd have kept him, we would have got promoted easily. I think. Did you know at that time that he would go on to be a good manager? No, I didn't would know. Be, no, not not maybe not England manager, but mm. he would go on to have a, a bigger career. Doesn't surprise me that he has because he's one of them. He gets on with everyone, and I think. I don't know how he, how he works now, but he seems the same anyway. Um, you you want to play for him and you want to do well. I think he keeps a good envir environment around him um, from my experience with him. And so with that, you can only benefit. Interesting. Very interesting. Who else was in that team with, in the Middlesbrough side? And no doubt you guys spent a lot of time together. So who was your sort of pals in the team? Uh, Marvin, Marvin Emnez. I spent a lot of time with him. Um, I see you laughing when you mention his name. Yeah, because uh, he, he's uh, Ailey. He's Dutch lad, isn't it? So he's got his little accent. Ailey, what are we doing tonight? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, come then, come then, let's get a cab, and we'll go for. We end up going for dinner somewhere, and then we go 
go to a bar or a club, whatever we end up doing. Um, see, uh, Tony McMahon used to sit next to me. This guy, he kept me going for two years. He really? said, yeah, Tony McMahon was next to me in my locker for two years. And I swear to God, I wasn't really a morning person. So I used to sit, come in and he's just, he's just got energy 24-7. I'm like, you, you you got more energy than kids, like, you know what I mean? He's so lively and every day kept me going. I was like, I, used to, I ended up starting coming in the morning going to Macca. Not till 12 o'clock, please, just leave me alone. <laughs> and he goes, all right, all right. As soon as... um. Training's finished. He's we're back in. He's, he's on me. He's on me. And that, but he, he's a top lad. He made me laugh every day. Like, um, yeah, he's what he's one of the top lads I've been around in football. He's a proper proper guy. You want in the, in the change room? Any funny stories and moments that that stand out from your time at Middlesbrough? Whether that be sort of <laughs> trips yeah. or off the field or yeah, when um, we went to Slovenia for preseason. Slovenia is it? Yeah, Slovenia. We was in. Well, we was in Slovenia anyway. Um, this is not even on. A, we had a preseason game the next day. I think <laughs> me and me, Maka and Matthew Bates, we went into wherever we was in into the town centre. Got dropped off. They were sat in a bar. I was like, yeah, we'll just have a few, and um, we just got in it and cracked on. And uh, I, th I think we. We ended up in, let me come back with that story. We was, <laughs> we we um we played a game. We've gone to the hotel. The manager said we've got the Sunday off. So we've like gone, for, gone to his bar thinking it's a bar. It's not a bar. Anyway, something else. Cracked on then. And then, it's else. yeah, we've got a taxi to Hung Bud Bud Budapest. That's Hungary. Yeah, that's hungry. So it's, we was in the taxi for two and a half hours. You've gone to a different country. Yeah, we was in Slovenia. <laughs> <laughs> we was in the taxi. I was like, lads, Budapest. Is I was like, what do you fancy Budapest? Around here is shit. Do you fancy Budapest? They're like, how far is it? I was like, oh, it's only two and a half hours in the taxi. <laughs> Maka and, Maka and um, Batesy have looked at each other and they've gone, all right, fuck it. Come on, let's go. And we've got... We got in a taxi, gone up there, went out and had a great night and then um, got the taxi back and got back at like nine in the morning and uh, we're walking through reception and all the staff and the players who have stayed local were having their breakfast and uh, we're just hanging, mate. Because I think we was flying back later in that afternoon or something like that. Oh, mate, that was brilliant. It was great. We ended up, we went to Slovenia, ended up in Hungary for a night out. That's random. So not nonsense, man. That's random. <laughs> yeah. Would there have been a lot of sort of gambling going on amongst the players like cards know. and stuff and bits and bobs because at Bristol when I was at Bristol a lot of people gambled there yeah. at Bristol I don't gamble so we just went out and a lot of drinking and that so we squad, our squad at Middlesbrough was all similar ages so who was in that team with you? Uh, Mavin Evans Tony McMahon Matthew Bates Jeremy Allardyce I remember him from Arsenal. Yeah, from Jeremy Arsenal. Allardyne, Jeremy, yeah, yeah. he's my strap partner up there for a bit as What's well. What's he like? He's all right. He's quiet. And, um, yeah, he's a great lad. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's, he just does his own thing. He's proper quiet. Uh, yeah. yeah. Would Middlesbrough have been in the championship at that point? Yeah, he was in the championship, yeah. Okay, so you're well used to the championship and the physicality and how yeah, tough yeah. it is to get out of that league. Yeah, it's a tough league. It's, it's an enjoyable one, though, because you've got a game... Every three, three days, three, four days, man. In the Premier League, sometimes you don't play a game for nine days. You know what I mean? So the championship's good because you've got a game straight away, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday sometimes. Talk me through that first season in Teesside for Middlesbrough. Yeah, it was enjoyable. I enjoyed it. Um, enjoyed it up until Gordon Strachan took over. Um, he came in. Yeah, only mind he tried to sign you for Celtic as well. Yeah. If I... No, if it, to be fair, he's probably a different person to what he was, different manager, sorry, to what he was at Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough, he just came in. He's just like, looked at all the players' wages and all that. And he's just, he's moaning about how, why are these players on there so much money and stuff. Like, what's that got to do with you, man? You're not paying them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, he started, that, the change room just like got pff, torn apart. Uh, come January, bought all the lads that he played for him up the road, 
put put them on big money. That was okay though. And um, so there was a lot the, of like, Scottish players coming. Not in. just Scottish players, the pl- players that play for him up up there in the Celtic team, the ones that did well for him. We brought them down, and um, and he even brought Chris Boyd down from Scotland. You know, you know, Scot- um, Scotland, Scottish football's top top scorer in the league ever, isn't it? So. And uh, he came down, all them boys, all the boys, Celtic boys, he, some of them was just like, they were so dead. So what we had before, they were dead. I'm like, but you know when managers just bring in what they know and it's embarrassing, but it split the change room. So he took over with us second in league, one point off top, ended up finishing just outside of relegation. That's really? what that's what would, a big effect a manager can have on an he divided the change room. That's a big, big drop. I swear down, it was embarrassing. We didn't even make playoffs. We was finished just outside of relegation. Not just outside, but like nowhere near where we, that squad should have been. And we, that was down to one person and one thing only the manager and the way he was with players and some of the things he used to do just like just to ruin the the whole positive energy that was around in the change room just came in and just like ruined it. Is there any moments that sort of stand out like something like you could give us an example of of that? When he blamed a player for a goal for a goal that we conceded and that player wasn't even on the pitch. Come again. We played Newcastle away and um, (laughs) oh that was too funny and um Someone's crossed it. I mean, we scored the Newcastle second goal. And um, we got in the change room after. He's, oh, it's a fucking disgrace. Blah, blah, blah. Shouting his head off. Blah, blah. And you, you fucking blah, blah, blah. Why didn't you stop the fucking cross? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, Mark Yates went, I wasn't even on the fucking pitch. He was sub. And um, we all had to think he was actually on the pitch. So that was a personal one. And it was... Just, he, that, he didn't like Mark Yates. I don't know what Mark what Yates did to him. Only he knows. And if Mark Yates actually does know, because when I asked him, he said, I don't have a clue. And uh, he hated him. And he really disliked him. Like we're talking. He used to, uh, listen, when I'm telling you, it would be, it would be, some of these little lads now, I'm hearing them saying they're being bullied because they're being shouted. It's bullying. This was beyond bullying. This was abuse. Personal abuse man it was personal and it was horrible to see because Yates is a good lad as well and I loved him and he's brilliant for the change room one of the funny characters had us all going every day everybody li- lively and it come January he was gone he went to Sheffield United I think managed to go rid of him I'm like he's a big part of the change room he's a big part of what we wanted to do that's why Southgate brought in them kind of people yeah, I'm, I'm sure Southgate done his background and uh, Yates is brilliant lad everybody loved him and um, so we seen all that guy. Taylor Stuart Taylor went on loan to Watford, and started, all these players started getting get Stuart Taylor. Stuart Andrew Taylor started. Um, he he went new because he started getting rid of so many good players and good lads who were good for the change room, and yeah, it just didn't happen for us after that. Were you there for the next season? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he got sacked that season. So he was gone literally end of the season. Literally, they no, he came. He got sacked with Barth. He lasted a year, I think. He got a year to all the time he took over. He got sacked um, before the, maybe October, November. He got, he got sacked. So and um, Tony Mowbray came in and absolutely flipped it around again. So it wasn't the players. We had the players to do it. It's the way he was, he was managing the players. The most important person at a football club is the manager because you, you can affect the whole change room, man. That's what he did. And Tony Mowbray came in and... You know, we we didn't look. I think we didn't lose. We went on an amazing run again. If he would have come a bit earlier, we would have made playoffs. <laughs> what do you think the main difference was between Tony Mowbray's approach and that of Gordon Strachan? Just respected the players, and I mean, didn't didn't really, if he didn't want you, he'll tell you, not do things to try and get you out or things. He'll say he'll say. Um, not, not in my plans he's like Chris Boyd and some of the players he, he told him uh, you're not in my plans for how I play blah 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 he's honest you can't there's nothing you can't argue with that when a manager says that to you you can't argue with that and this is the problem that don't happen though the, back then it did happen and it probably still don't happen now I don't know 
we have to spit. I don't really ask them questions anymore. I just watch and support. <laughs> so it, it's that's the main thing about it. When a manager don't want it, they should just tell you, right, you're not part of my plans, boom. Okay, fair enough. Well, you can't argue then, isn't it? You, you can't sit around and soak. You can sit around and collect your money or you can say to your agent, right, find me a club that wants me and I can play football. Boom. Talk to me about the decision to join Swansea City. How did that move come about? Brendan. <laughs> so uh, Brendan Rodgers joined Swansea. Yeah. He tried to convince you to stay at yeah, Reading. Yeah, yeah. He's obviously, you're on his radar. He tried to get still. me at Watford. Did he really? Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, his, his manager, that's always respected. He respected the way I played and always always tried to get me. So, yeah, it was just a, a simple one. It's a chance to get back in the Premier League and you don't turn the Premier League down. So, I was, I was 26 and, um, you know, I thought it was my chance to get in the Premier League again. Brendan finally gets his man. Talk to me about who was in that Swansea team at the time. Uh, finally gets his man, but I came as number two because... Swansea play one up front, one strike with one one striker anyway. So I knew I was coming as number two, but it's a chance to get back in the Premier League. Um, Danny Graham was number one striker there at the time. I signed on the same day as Wayne Routledge. And I, read, I think they already had Nathan Dyer, Ashley Williams, Leon Britt and all them boys already there. So they, I don't think they made too many signings. I think me and Danny were new, Wayne was new. Uh, Scott Sinclair was there. Uh, Next Chelsea player as well, Scott. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it was a good squad, a good squad of players, and we played some serious football. Serious football. Some great players, as you mentioned. Neon Britton, what a player he was. Yeah, yeah. Pass percentage. Never seen him give away the Don't ball. Don't give away do the ball, no, no. Never. never see him give Not away even the in ball. training. Really? Not even in training, man. In training, it's, it's, I've done it. I can't recall him losing the ball. Like he was has enough time and make sure his, he knows his next pass all the time. He won't, as I said, he won't, I've said this before. He won't um, he won't kill you with a pass, but he'll keep the ball popping. <laughs> he played for England at every level, bar senior level. Do you feel he was good enough and could have got potentially a, a, a few games for England? Yeah, there's so many players like that. Though. Yeah, yeah, definitely. England, if they had someone like that. At the time when you had oh, Scholes and Gerard, and that, you could leave someone like Britain to do that job, but um, Scholes could do that as well, just as, as good or probably way better. <laughs> yeah, Harry Redknapp said that the only thing the England team was missing at the time was yeah, Leon Britain. That type of player, yeah. Big compliment. Yeah, definitely, Big definitely. Compliment. I think but the way England played wouldn't have suited Britain. So it would probably ruin it. It's like when Leon Britain went to um, Sheffield United. It's just no point. It was a bad move because Sheffield United played long ball, we'll smash it up to the big Henderson, head flick, and try. Leon will probably just watching the ball go like five foot four yeah, in the like, middle. He's probably got a neck ache. You know what I mean? How did you get on well or get on with Brendan Rodgers? Bearing in mind he is only playing one up front, so I guess that's a different dynamic to a manager's relationship yeah, a, with his players. At the beginning, we got on well. Um, we fell out. Well, not fell out. Well, I just. I did some bit things that shouldn't have done, and um, he he was leaving anyway. I think he had his mindset on um, Liverpool when they came in. He, I got on well with him. I thought training was unreal. Like it was probably the best best intensity in training I've been involved in. Like I felt that's the fittest I felt without playing every week. I felt I can go into any game at any time. Because the training was that good and, you know, I loved it. I loved it. I know, so did all the boys. Was it just the, the preparation that he put into his training sessions? Yeah, the intensity the, as well. The intensity. You, yeah, you trained at a high, high level. You, even if you're not playing, you'll be on players to be... If no one's putting it in, he'll be on you. So are we talking like plyometrics? Are we talking a lot of mini games? No, what, mini how, games, how passing like? drill, possession... Um, Possession games, yeah, like possession press, pressing, pressing games. If you're not pressing, loads of stuff like that. I remember we used to do loads of pressing drills, which which were really good. And I felt sharp because you felt good, man. Because you, you're putting in that work. We've done loads of mini games. We didn't do too much, too much shape. 
we've done set pieces. He let his assistant just do a few set pieces he's come up with and make sure we got our man and blah, blah, blah. Um, none of that. Stand there for two hours doing shape and watch moving the, moving the ball, no one walking, everyone freezing. None of that. We didn't do anything. Like, everything was at uh, intensity. Would you say he was one of the best coaches that you worked under so far coaches, at that point in your career? Yeah, definite, definite. Yeah, he's definitely a very, very high-level coach. Especially with the one up front, I'm guessing the pressing would have been key to that system. So the the tactics of his well, yeah, training was it geared one, it, around that. We didn't need to press. We had the ball. <laughs> we, <laughs> the other team had to press. We didn't need to press. We had the ball all the time, and it's a big difference. But we did get it back quick, and you know, anytime, anytime I before whenever I've played against um, Brendan Rogers' team, it's hard to get the ball off them anyway. So uh, when I was made as we play Swansea away, I knew it was a tough game, and I played out front on my own. I knew I wasn't going to see the ball because Swansea kept the ball so good. Yeah, so we've, we've done a lot of pressing stuff and that, but that was for when we needed it, and we didn't need it too often. Second season at Swansea um, with the one up front. Are you finding it hard to get game time to get? I did. I had I, I, my first season. I started the whole time I was there. I started four games. Really, in three years. Wow. I only played eighteen times for twenty. I went alone most times. So I know. I know you only played twenty times for him, and you spent. You was the eighteen. With Birmingham, Sheffield Wednesday, Brighton, Hove Albion. Yeah, I went. I was alone most of the time because I wasn't playing. I was. I went alone, mate. So Are you that type of player then. If you're not playing, you you don't want to be there. So no, it's not. I don't want to be there. I want to play football. Yeah. I'm a footballer. I was a footballer. Not, not. I wasn't there to sit on the bench you and there just collect, to collect my money. Wages. Nah, no. Nah, well, I was always went on loan. Talk to me about the first loan away from Swansea, which would have been to Birmingham City. Yeah. Can you talk to me about that in that period? Yeah, when Lee Clark was Lee Clark, the manager, um, give me a call and then said, "You want to come come on loan to us and play some games." Uh, I said, yeah, I'm not. Nothing's happening here. I think Crystal Palace at the time as well. Dougie rang me as well. Dougie, Fre- Dougie Freeman. Freeman rang me to go there as well. I said, come down. I'll look after you. And I was like, I think Palace was struggling at that time. And get, they got promoted that year, by the way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, then I went Birmingham because I knew Lee Clark and I got on with him all right when I was in Norwich, but. He's a manager now, so a different personality, different person. Do you see a different switching ex players when they become managers? Like they're not when one Lee of the Clark was anymore. a when Lee Clark was a was man, um, assistant manager at Norwich, he was just a yes man. He didn't really say much. He stood around, talked to you. But when he's a manager, and the way he was talking to some people, and when I got there, and I just seen a different person. And obviously, you have to be, but there's a positive positive way of doing it and a negative way of doing it. He didn't. He wasn't really positive, and the way he treated some of the young players, the way he spoke to them, and, the, and the, his whole team of staff, and that, I just thought they were all mugs. You returned back to Swansea City. Are you then trying to refocus to get back in the team, or did you know you were initially Remember, going to go back out on loan? Um, it was the Birmingham City my first loan? Uh, Birmingham was your first loan from Swansea, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, it was Brighton second, didn't it? No, Sheffield Wednesday second. Is it okay? Yeah. You know what? You got that thing up there. <laughs> no, ain't, no, I ain't got nothing. Yeah, yeah. It all comes out of my yeah, head. Yeah. All comes out um, of my head. Bam, bam again, yeah. But uh, what was the question? Sorry. When you returned back to Swansea City, did you know that you were going to go again straight out on loan, or did you try to just get yourself back into Brendan's thinking? And Brendan wasn't that? there then. Oh, he's gone Liverpool. Right, yeah, he's already gone. Who was there? So, that point? Michael Loudrop. Michael Loudrop. Yeah, Dickie. Wow. What a player, though. A hell of a player. Hell of I'm a player. Real. Dickhead, dickhead guy, though. Really? Yeah. What was your reasons for, for not sort of gelling or not not rating Loudrop? No one did. No one did. He didn't do anything. He didn't coach nothing. He only coached for the big games. When you play Man United and them teams, that's the only time he coached. What do you mean? So if you've got, like, say, for yeah. instance, you're not playing Man United, you're playing... You're playing... Uh, say you play... Southampton, for instance. He would, you'd come in training, he'd join in, try and flick the ball over people's heads and that, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, bro, he's, he's annoying, bro. Just, he brought in all the, all the loads of these players through his agent and all that, as they all do, most of them. 
which is normal. And uh, I wasn't inv- well, I was involved a couple of times, but um, I wasn't a fan of him. And uh, the change room wasn't great, but done okay and won the league cup. Were you involved in that team? Nah, I wasn't. Cup? Nah. I wasn't involved at all, but I was there. I seen it all, and um, yeah. He used to be the last one in training, first one to leave. And if it rained during training, he would put his hand on his head and run in. Mad. As a, this is the manager. Yeah. Next up for you, Sheffield Wednesday. No doubt, like we spoke about, you need to be playing football. You're that type of character. Who was the manager at uh, Sheffield Wednesday? Dave Jones. Dave Jones. Yeah. Dave Jones was the manager. Yeah, yeah, he's all right. Well, I enjoyed it. Though. Sheffield Wednesday, all right. I enjoy, I properly enjoyed it. Did it? Was there a day in Sheffield that it didn't actually rain? It rains a lot in Sheffield. I've been there. It probably, rained a lot. Yeah, I've been you're there right. probably forty or fifty times in my life. I think I don't think I've been there. It's not rained. I was there from what January to the end of the season. That's heavy rain season. Yeah, I was there from like end of January, mate. It was raining a lot. <laughs> It's it cold up if there. If anyone can confirm this in Sheffield, yeah. it definitely rains <laughs> yeah, yeah. more there than it does down south. But then again, in Swansea, I was there for years. It rained every day there, man. Swansea's the <laughs> rainiest place in Britain. Uh, Sheffield can't be far behind. No, no, I swear down. Swansea's worse. Swansea's worse. But really? even when the sun's out, sometimes the rain just... I think it's just like a... It just has to happen every day, man. It's like brushing your teeth out there, man. Trust me. What was it like in Sheffield then? You liked the place. Yeah, I loved by it. the weather. Did you see yourself when you're on these loans? Are you trying to impress to get a full time move there? Or do you I've done well. I've done well there. Yeah, you scored some goals there. Yeah, fans fans like me there as well. Um, I thought, but yeah, when I spoke to Dave Jones there in the season, I had a year left at Swansea still. And then he asked me if I would sign there. And I said, yeah. But then I was waiting for his call. And then obviously, I don't know, maybe change his mind or budget or whatever. He ended up getting sacked anyway, so that didn't happen. Um, yeah, you move on. Back to Swansea. When yeah. you went back again, was Loudrup still there or had he moved on at that point? Yeah, Loudrup, Loudrup lasted the whole season and a bit. Yeah. So he lasted and then... A little Gary, bit of crossover period again. In my last year there, he, um, he got sacked. I don't know what, I think maybe January time or something like that. And... Um, I went, uh, Gary Monk took over and I stayed there to the end of the season. Well, that's Swansea? Yeah, because I went... Did and, Gary Monk come from being a no, player? Got, and it got to a point when I was at Swansea, yeah. the, Michael Alger was making me train with the youth team. Really? Um, not involved, so he's making me train with the youth team <laughs> for like months. And until I and went along like to Brighton. 27 at this age, right? 28? 20, 27, 20, 28, 29? Wow. Yeah, uh, 28, 29, making me train with the youth team. But I don't care. I still cracked on with it. Um, turn up some, turn up sometimes. <laughs> when they pissed me off, I just went off on my own missions. Um, <laughs> done my own thing. Um, done your own training. Done my own training, yeah. Uh, <laughs> what would you do when you just disappear? Right, uh, genuine uh, question. I'd just be in London, chilling. Yeah. Or, go, or going out or something like meet my friends or something like that. Well, you just you just go AWOL and like they've got you in the youth not team. AWOL. They don't need you. I there, could, do I, they? No, not AWOL. Everyone knew who I was. My whole team knew who I was. <laughs> AWOL is when no one knows where you are. <laughs> my team knew who I was, man. So, like, so MIA, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I wasn't missing either. They knew exactly where I was, bro. <laughs> I, I made sure that I asked, <laughs> asked my teammates at the time. They knew exactly where I was. So making me tra- he's making me train with the youth team and shit like that, and so I was just getting like disheartened. When I was like, "This is all bollocks," and uh, I went on loan again. Did you ever confront him and ask for the reason why you're not? I don't talk to pricks like that. He used to say hello to me when he lived. He lived in my block, so shut, I used to see him all the time. Up. Yeah, every day. That was in- quite awkward in the lift at times. No, no, he didn't get in my lift. My lift was only I could get in my lift. Really? Yeah, yeah. I think there's only <laughs> there's only that side because all the cars were parked in the same bit so I used to always bump into him coming in and out wherever there was only me awkward. and Steve Corker, Stephen Corker in the same block because it's quite new and they hadn't sold or anything like that so Steve Corker wasn't there but there was one other flat whoever lived there I don't remember 
So, um, yeah, my lift was always empty. It's just me up and down in there, really. Did you enjoy your time at the south, on the south coast with Brighton? Nah. It's quite a relatively short time stay I'd, for you, wasn't it? I just went there to get out of Swansea and play football. Try and play football anyway, but I knew I was not going to play reg- regularly there. Got there, figured I didn't even start a game there. Don't think I started a game. So I was coming as backup because all their strikers got injured. Um, who's the one that was in Leicester? Um, Ujoa. He got injured. Um, Mackey. Who, who was that? Um, Peter Brother striker. They all got injured. All them players got injured. So they needed a backup. And I was just there as backup. And I was thinking, you know what? It's better than training with a youth team. <laughs> so I just went down, you know. <laughs> So, and at least I'll be closer to London as well. So that's what that was about. It wasn't about them bringing me there to play. I wasn't there to play. I was there as backup. So and did did your contract expire with Swansea before you joined yeah. Barnsley then? You yeah, would have joined Barnsley con- on no, a free my, transfer. No, my contract was finished. My three years was done at Swansea. So 